niggas. That's why I rap with a diaper on. Don't be approaching me with none of your mess. Talk about where I belong. Just tell your fans all about me to sit and watch as they minds get blown. Niggas don't have basic shit. Well, I'm gonna go aim for bitch. I know y'all pray for this, and I'm getting to the hang of shit for your favorites. I'm gonna go down to your favorite switch. Niggas act hard, I'm gonna change the switch. Everybody make it to be a million miles, they know I got skills, y'all pay for this. When I lay some hit, you a bastard dumb. You can take it as a lesson, son. If you smart, you would drop the mic and try to stick up a fake with a weapon drum. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, we have this beautiful, absolutely, it's absolutely beautiful guys. It, uh, the FMS Super Scorpion, man. Um, <laughs> it took me literally four hours to put it together. You guys are probably thinking, what the fuck, Dave? It's like 14 screws or 13 screws or whatever. Why the hell did it take you that long to put it together? Well, it's because I was up all night watching uh, Pilot Ryan Media. Or in the, and I was in the Pilot's Lounge. Um, and Ryan uh, pulled a Kenny last night. Um, a legit Kenny, you guys. Like, he legit pulled a Kenny, man. Um, uh, even Kenny himself would be proud. Uh, Hangar 51 uh, would be proud. Uh, Ryan actually got the uh, F-15 all put together. Um, we ended up getting his light burner thing all fixed because we ended up, uh, switching over some Guniac parts over to that, uh, center burner and it started working. So, um, look guys, if you're going to go out and buy or purchase a center burner, don't even waste your fucking time with anybody else, man. Get a Guniac center burner, man. Get a, just go get a, just buy a Guniac center burner. He's fairly priced. Um, he custom makes the thing specifically for your plane, anything that you need like extra or for something like little detail that you want different with yours, he's available, man. And he'll, he'll, he'll make those changes for you, man. So center, center, uh, Guniac center burners, guys, man. I mean, I, I just, I won't buy a center burner from anyone else. If, if I'm going to start putting these things, these fiery booties in my planes, um, then, uh, I'm, I'm always going to go through, uh, through Guniac, man. He's all, he's treated me so well. Um, and everybody else that he's dealt with, I'm sure, uh, feels the same way. But you guys, so sick. It's all good. I got it plugged in. I, I actually, uh, I have everything all dialed in. I got the rates put in already. I have the flap to elevator mix all put in. Um, so basically, my full flaps, is it's not going to give any more down elevator. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is just on my first set of flaps, um, it's going to give me a, a pitch so that the plane, it doesn't balloon. You guys know what I mean. When you pop flaps on, flaps on some of these planes, um, they'll balloon. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do. Um, RC, RC Informer didn't use any flap to elevator mix, and his, his plane seemed fine. Um, but he does stuff, stuff with his control horns to kind of like smoothen out the, uh, the ride uh, and the feel of the sticks. Um, uh, I didn't do that. I just put in rates and put in expo. And um, I'm, also, um, I'm also running a... Uh, my gyro, the gyro that I always run in all my planes, I also have that in here as well. Like I said, it, it's turned down super, super, super low. Uh, basically, I just have it just more more for the uh, the ailerons than anything. I don't ever need it for a rudder. Don't ever need it for an elevator. Uh, it's just mostly just for the ailerons, like for when you're coming into land. It really kind of just keeps that plane stable at slower speeds. Um, and that's why I like the gyro. And it, like I said, it's probably like 15% out of hundred percent. It's like at 15 or 20% on the ailerons and nothing else. Everything else is turned down. Um, uh, there's nothing on the elevator, nothing on the rudder. It's only a two axis gyro anyways. It only does elevator and aileron anyhow. Um, but, uh, if I pick the plane up and move it, you'll see it's actually less than what the, um, than what, uh, AS3X gives you. It's, it's, it's much, I don't think this plane needs a gyro period. I, I just... I typically like running the gyro just because I, I usually run that gyro and everything except for like the Abani, the L39. Uh, I know this is another sport jet, but I, I do remember. I know a lot of people are saying that this one actually flies better than the 80 millimeter Super Scorpion from uh, Motion RC, and they're probably right. Um, I think Ryan said that, and also RC Informer also mentioned something like that. Um, so I, you probably doesn't need it. Uh, with me, it's just more of just a comfort thing. Um, 
if I get it up there and I, I'm flying it and it doesn't seem like I need it, then I'll just turn it down completely. Um, but yeah, guys, I mean, it's, it's sick, man. Everything works. I, I love getting a plane, putting it together and everything works. I love, I love that feeling. I love that feeling, checking all the surfaces, making sure everything's, you know, tight and, and, and square. And, and it is, man, this thing, uh, this thing's rock solid. Uh, it's super, super thick here. I got I'm, I'm doing the blogger life guys. So, um, but I, I have the battery in here. Um, this one actually was topped off and then I drained it a little bit. Um, and then I, uh, I'm going to put it on the charger and I'm going to decharge it a little bit more because I forgot to decharge this one, uh, fully. I'm going to decharge it a little bit more and then charge it back up. I believe, let me see, Caleb, did that, oh, it stopped. It went over the time limit, uh, because it's a 6,000 milliamp. Are you making your, uh, broccoli stuff? Yes. Oh, it's going to be so good. I know. I can't wait. No, don't do, uh, don't do lemon juice this time. Okay. It's just, I, it's just for some reason, it just doesn't, it doesn't go right. And use some of the, uh, use some of the cauliflower too. You can, you don't have to put it together. You can make it like in two separate batches and so that it's not mixing. Uh, but yeah, guys, so that it actually timed out, uh, because I have my, uh, my, uh, charger on a timer. If it doesn't, if it doesn't do what it's supposed to do by a certain time, it'll, 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 st it'll shut down the system. Uh, radio, 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 radio. What? Mm, it's off the track. It's just off the track. Yeah, there you go. Lift it up. Now push it back. Just lift it up and push it back now. There you go. See, that's all. They're brand, they're brand new drawers, and when they went to it, when they installed them, uh, they kind of didn't put that bracket on uh, tight enough. So if you get it just right, it'll fall out of the track a little bit. Um, it's on my thing list of things to do. Um, super nice plane, you guys. I'll check the chat here in a minute, you guys. Um, God, man, I just, I've just been staring at it. It's just so, it's so nice, you guys. It, it makes the free wing, uh, uh, Super Scorpion look like doo doo. No, I'm just kidding. The free wing Super Scorpion is actually pretty nice. Um, I will be flying this on my Tactic 850 just because, um, I'm more familiar with this radio than the Spectrum at this point. Not to mention, I don't have a Spectrum receiver. So, um, and like pretty much all my receivers are tactic. I do have some gyro receivers that I got from uh, Eric Rogers. Um, but I was messing around with one of those one day and I just couldn't get it to work right. So I just said, screw it. I'll figure that shit out later. I'll watch a tutorial on it or something. Uh, but let me go ahead. I'll fire this up for you guys real quick. Uh, we need to calibrate the throttle anyways. That was one thing that I hadn't done yet. We're going to do that. I'm going to do it now. So... What we do is we go up on the stick, all the way up, and then, um, Kayla, can you hold this for a second, just for a second? Just hold it down here, yeah. And we're going to plug this in. Bang, pop. Holy shit. We're rocking and rolling, bros. Uh, so, yeah, just so you guys know, I know you guys, I, I learned this quite a long time ago with the, when these XT90s first came out. <laughs> you can plug in your EC5s to your XT90s, you guys. Uh, just make sure that they're tight uh, because some of these can actually be quite loose. This one actually is a tight fit. It's a, it's a tighter fit. It's, um, but sometimes these will fit together so loosely that during the flight it will come unplugged. Uh, and you don't want that to happen, you guys. Um, as, as some added insurance, I mean, if you just got a spare piece of like black tape, that's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll stick a piece of black tape like right here up against the wall right here before we go. That way I could just kind of wrap it around the end there. Um, there's no sense of changing out the heads. There's no sense of changing out the, the, the connectors. Um, it's just, if it fits, if the, yeah, like if, like if the shoe fits, wear it. Right. So, uh, yeah, guys. So let's get this right here real quick i'll show you it's just a slight flap to elevator if you watch the elevator back there you'll see it move just a little bit boom just a tiny bit that's it and then nothing for full flap full flap come in hold on there we go baby and then full flap comes in and it's it stays the same then we go back up with this 
and then the, the elevator will come back up. Uh, it's just a little bit, you guys. If it needs to be more, then I'll, I'll change it. I'll, I'll add a little more. But for right now, um, I don't do a lot of flap to elevator mixing on any of my planes. And it seems like recently the this plane and that Focke Wolf 190 over there uh, both need it. Uh, none of my other planes, none of my other planes really need it. Um, there was one that actually did need it, but I never ended up doing it. I just let the son of a bitch balloon. Oh, it was, it was the Avani. Yeah, the Avani likes to balloon when you throw full flaps in all of a sudden. Um, no matter how slow you got them. Uh, the good thing about the Tactic 850 is it is a more advanced radio than the Tactic 650s and the 6, 660, uh, the new one that just came out. Uh, you can slow down your flaps, which I have them slowed down. I usually slow them down to about 50%, which is perfect. Uh, and if, if it balloons like seriously, you guys, if it balloons up like massively and it's noticeable, even with the, uh, elevator, I probably won't even add any more down elevator. What I'll do is I'll just slow my flaps down a little more. Uh, that seems to, uh, kind of kick it in the butt, uh, so to say. Um, but yeah, guys, let me see, let me see if this worked. Oh yeah, that worked. That was two, two notches, two, two notches. One, two. Yep. And we're already low gear. Oh my god, this thing this thing's gonna fucking crank you guys. Oh shit, no 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 no. No, we can't break another mirror, Dave. You stay. Oh my god. That'll be the third that that that's the third mirror that's been in this on that wall. Oh my god. I gotta stop breaking mirrors, man. I'm like at 14 years of bad luck right now. And, and, and legit, you guys, no bullshit. I had just gotten over seven years for breaking a mirror prior to breaking the first mirror over there. Um, ah, man, I, I, you know what? I hate being superstitious, and goddamn my dad for making me that way. Uh, my stepfather fucking putting pennies in his goddamn soccer cleats and in his baseball cleats when he played sports and shit. And I used to put pennies in my fucking football cleats. And let me tell you something, guys. When you're running in a pair of football cleats... And that penny decides to turn sideways all of a sudden, and it goes in between your toes, or it, it digs into the bottom of your foot, bro. You'll think twice. You'll think twice about wanting to put pennies in there. So what you what you do after that is you take some duct tape, right? You put the penny in there, and you duct tape that goddamn penny to the bottom of your shoe. It's just weird stuff, you guys, that, like, just weird stuff. Weird, weird stuff. Mirrors. Me and mirrors don't, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't share common ground. Um, we got a history. <laughs> we have a history with the mirrors. Uh, but nice fit, you guys. Look, look how nice that fits, you guys. It's it's super nice, right? I'm actually gonna go out and fly it today, you guys. I'm charging up the packs now. I will be using the six thousand packs, the uh, HRB six thousand, this five thousand right here, and the other five thousand that I have uh, that I have to go grab is for the SU thirty. These were just a little bit too heavy for the SU-30, you guys. Didn't seem to want to come off the ground in the grass. Maybe if we were on pavement, it would have come up a lot easier. Uh, but these are quite heavy. I mean, if you, you can see the size difference between these two packs, you guys. I mean, there is a significant difference. I mean, it's much wider. And then if you flip them over to the tops, I mean, still wider. It's still wider. I mean, this this is a bigger pack, man. It's, it's, it's just a bigger pack. And then you got... A thousand more milliamps and um, they got to squeeze it in somehow these HRB packs are not very compact either they're they're they're, they're a big pack they're a big heavy pack um, this one's actually almost done then we'll charge that one up and that's in there you guys and then both of the five thousands I just I just need to top them off I charged them the other day and we didn't go fly because it rained so I basically just gonna top them off I'm gonna decharge them just a little bit and then top them off top them back off um, I've noticed guys that I've always done that. It, it just seemed, it seemed feasible that it would be something that would work. I, I've never lost a battery because I've kept it charged too long or charged it for four or five days and left it there, uh, or charged it and then left the battery for four or five days and didn't use it. Um, basically what I'll do is I'll take that full charged battery that I didn't use when I'm about ready to go out and use it. I'll decharge it down to like. 3.95 4.0 and then i'll put it back into balance and balance it out again and charge balance charge it and i've never had a battery shit on me because of of, of mistreating it i guess you would say 
So just just if you if if you feel like trying that little trick for yourself, I know that if there's a couple of you guys that have actually already tried it and you guys have seen results with it. Um, so just remember that if you charge up your packs, don't, don't be, don't fret, man. It's not going to kill them. It's not what, what will kill them is if you leave them charged and then you go five days later, grab that battery without decharging it and grab it when it's not quite fully topped off. Because when you leave a battery, it will drain a little bit, uh, just on its own. And you take that battery and you throw it in a jet and you go fly it. That's when you fuck up a battery. Decharging the battery a little bit and charging it back up, it kind of just refreshes the cells. I think I, I just that's just my theory on it. But like I said, guys, I've never ever lost a battery because of keeping it charged too long. I had a I had one of these uh, HRGs, one of these things right here. I had one of these. This thing was charged for almost a goddamn month, you guys. Uh, before we went out and Tyler flew the um, the SU30 for the first time, it was on that pack. And I'll be damned, that pack flew like a son of a bitch. He probably had it up there for about at least two and a half, three minutes. And uh, when he brought the pack down, the pack was still in good health. And it was like at 3.86. So that's actually quite nice. He could have actually gone a little bit longer. I didn't check the percentage on it um, because I didn't have my checker with me. Or I did have the checker with me. I just didn't have it out in the field with us. And uh, I forgot to check it when I got home. But uh, let me check the chat real quick, you guys. Um, Duniac, what's going on, man? Holy shit, we got some chats going on in here. Uh, planes are in table 10. But you're shameless. But like I've seen your comments on Aerosmith stuff videos. Um, yeah, man. Uh, Victor's part of this community. Yes, man. He's, um, you'll see Victor everywhere. A lot of these guys. Uh, Eric, you'll see me. Uh, Ray is the man. You guys, that, that's no bullshit. What is that? Mr. Garley, I can't here, here, hold that. Just hold that for a second. What happened to the other Minsk? You already used it all? Is that a new one? I don't know. I don't care if you open this one. It's just garlic. Well, that's the only other one that I saw in there. Hopefully there's no coronavirus in it. There it goes. Jesus Christ, man. I guess they don't want you to open these, huh? Ooh, yeah. That smells good. I love fresh garlic. Um, Chuck G R C. Um, I gotta change the color of the message boards because it's white on white. It, it's so crazy. Hey, are you saying you like Ray's fiery booty best? Oh, absolutely. Ray's got the best booty, best booty uh, in the nation. You guys, there, there's nobody that has a better fiery booty than Ray. That's. I mean, that's just it, Josh. Motherfucking Weaver, what are you doing in my goddamn stream? No, I'm just kidding. What's up, man? How you doing, bro? Been banged in the ribs. Everything hurts. Yeah, dude, don't laugh. Jeff, don't laugh. Jeff, Jeff, don't laugh. <laughs> don't fart either. Don't do anything. As a matter of fact, don't do nothing, man. When you hurt your ribs, that sucks, man. Just breathing hurts. Especially when coughing or laughing. <laughs> oh, oh, man, Josh, we got to get Jeff before we get out of this fucking live stream, man. <laughs> we got to get him, bro. We got to get him like we got Eric. Uh, see, the cat from hell is chilling out. Where is that motherfucker? Where's the cat, Kayla? People see him and I don't. That's scary. That's scary when people are in the chat going, hey, I see the cat. And then I fucking look and I don't see the cat. Babies! Babies! Beachy, 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 boy. I bet she's fucking with your hamster. Beachy, boy! Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? You being a bad boy? He's a good boy, man. We got him fixed finally, so he's kind of... He's kind of calmed down, but not really. He still beats the shit out of the dog and does his, does his weird. He was weird for a couple of days, and then he kind of just went back to his old self, I guess. Went out, Cairo put back, and all that was going to immediately, but now coronavirus times. Yeah, man, this shit's crazy, man. This coronavirus thing's crazy. Like, I legit, I hated, I hate to do it, but I had to cut Kayla off from having her friends in here anymore. I mean, I just, I just can't do it. I can't do it. Like, I can't, I can't risk it. I can't risk it. Um, 
Congrats, Dave. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that, man. Jeff from Lower Alabama says it flies great. I hope so, man. I think I think it's gonna too, man. I, I honestly think it's going to too. I, I honestly believe that it's gonna fly better than the 80 mil. The 80 millimeter, man. That one's. I mean, maybe I was doing something wrong, you guys. But I mean, I've. I I mean, I started flying on jets, you guys. So jets are really nothing to me. I actually have more problems with prop planes than I do with jets. Jets are actually. To be honest with you guys, besides the overall speed of the actual aircraft, man, jets are way easier to fly than prop planes. Don't ever be, don't ever get intimidated by a fucking jet. Jets are, jets are simple, man. Jets are like, they're, they're like, they're like planes for dummies, man. I'm telling you, because first off, you don't have to worry about adjusting your rudder to keep the thing pitched right. And then when you take off, there's going to be that roll. To, I mean, that is a difficult thing to grasp when you have never done it before and you've been spoiled by flying these jets where you just punch the throttle and the damn thing pretty much takes off by itself. Uh, that's another plane we got to get out and fly, man. That thing's been sitting in my truck for a month and a half, and we still haven't flown the freaking thing, you guys. Uh, did I unplug that? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I did. Shut that down. All right. Um, so don't ever be intimidated by jets, you guys. Jets are way easier than prop planes. Um, and once you fly your first couple of, like, faster, bigger jets, you'll see what I mean. Uh, Cyclops Elephant, bro. Yo, man, what is good, bro? How are you doing? Oh, my God, my camera, my fucking lens is dirty as shit, man. Looks like an elephant shit on it. God damn, it's still dirty. Fuck, that's some ninja shit. Where's Ryan? God, here we go. But, you know, this is just my look. There isn't any messages. Yeah, right. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. Wow, man. That's so... That's so dirty. What the hell is going on? How the hell did it... What ha I must have set this down on something. Like fucking goddamn Sasquatch piss or something. Do we have Yetis around here? All right. So, back to the messages. Jeff... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Holy shit, there's a ton of you guys in here, man. Uh, so let me start back here. This, you know, I should have done this for my laptop, you guys. I just didn't want to go in there and get it. It's, it's, it's just a pain in the ass. It's not really a pain in the ass to set it up, but I just have to bring chairs out. I have to, like, it is so much easier for me to just grab my phone. However, the downfall to that is the fact that I can't see what I'm recording while I'm looking at the message board. Uh, and then on top of that, I have to scroll through all the messages. It only shows me about three messages at a time. Uh, but, 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 they're badass. Amazing plane. Uh, it's an amazing plane. Guniac says, Guniac, so you, you have, you have one of these or you have flown one of these. Uh, jets are sometimes actually boring to watch. Bro, you ain't kidding me, man. I, I, I mean, I, unless I like you and I like your YouTube channel and, um, I know that you're actually flying jets. I, I will go and watch my buddies. Or, like, I'll watch RC Informer, I'll watch Pilot Ryan. But other than that, it's like, I don't know, man. What, what's boring is watching RC Informer fly. <laughs> it's the same routine every time. No matter what jet it is, no matter what plane it is, it doesn't matter what the hell the plane is, it's the same routine every time. Which is good for him, but kind of boring for, for, for me. Um, it's like, okay, he just made his second pass. Now the next pass he's going to make, it's going to be inverted. Then he's gonna do a high speed down. Then he's gonna do a high speed up. Then he's gonna then he's gonna do his reverse cubing. Then he's gonna reverse cubing the other way. Then he's gonna do his tight circles out front, out front. Then he's gonna do his knife edge this way. He's gonna do his knife edge back this way. Then he's gonna do his three four point roll. And then four point roll back this way. And then he's gonna pop flaps and do slow flight. Go this way. Then he's gonna pop pull the flaps and he's gonna do a high speed turn around. He's gonna come back. He's gonna go slow again full flats and he's going to do a reverse cubing out of that he's going to roll back to the flight he's going to cut the throttle he's going to glide in with full flaps pop the gear and land the plane that's rc informer bang <laughs> say it ain't so bro say it ain't so say i just didn't nail the shit out of that bro that's rc informer's routine bro i've watched so many of his goddamn videos man that it's the same thing over and over again which is good 
for him, that's a great thing. That is an awesome habit to have gotten himself into. That and, and the fact that he's a fucking pilot, anyways. He actually flies like Airbuses and shit. I think um, he does. He he flies some type of big big aircraft, DC eights or something. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, he's a pilot. So I mean, he just he 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 calls it. His, it's his pattern. You know what I mean? He, and that's what they, I guess they call it as pilots. It's the pattern. They're in a flight. It's, it's his flight pattern. So. Uh, Mike Keller says the landing gear is a little lame, but it flies real nice. The landing gear on this is lame. I mean, it, it, it doesn't surprise me, you guys, trailing links. I'm not a big fan of trailing links, uh, on sport planes. Just not, uh, trailing links on like warbirds and shit like are uh, on, on like, um, military jets like that. And like the F-18 and, um, the, uh, the F-22 Raptor, the um, the F-18, the F-15, F-14. I the trailing links are actually the F-14 doesn't have that has oleos, but um, they work great on those type of planes, those type of jets. But with these sport planes, you guys, these sport jets, oh man, the sport jets are um, they they need oleos, they need tall oleos as well, man, because that 80 millimeter uh, Super Scorpion that's in my bedroom. Um, it will not take off from the grass unless you have a solid headwind gusting and you get a couple lucky bounces of the nose wheel uh, to, to make the front of the plane pop up. Boom, boom. And then she'll take off. Uh, but yeah, guys, I just thought I'd do a live stream real quick showing you the finished build. Um, I mean, it's really not a build. It's more or less an assembly. It's These things have... Everything's come so far. Just in the little time that I've been in the hobby... Where we're not fucking using glue anymore, you guys. We're not gluing anything. There's no need to glue things nowadays with plastic hard points and um, already finished wings with carbon fiber and already infused into them. Um, one thing that I will do after we fly this thing, the maiden flight, is when I get it back here tonight, I'm going to go through my box and find my carbon fiber rads. And we're going to carbon fiber the nose of this thing from... Uh, from about here, yeah, from about like right here, all the way down the nose till about yeah, right here, just like I did on my 80 millimeter one. Um, probably doesn't need it, but um, it's just it's just added it's just added reinforcement and comfort for me to just to do it. I mean, I've done that one, uh, pretty much anything with a big giant fucking pointy nose on it like that. The F18. Um, F-15, the F-18, yeah, those planes, F-16s, uh, the big giant pointy nose on it, you guys, I, it's not necessary, it's really not, but it does add some strength and some rigidity to the plane, uh, over time, you do, you will notice over time that these planes, they do soften up and they do get a little, a little bit more flexed out and flexible after you've flown them a few times, like that plane right there, I haven't even flown it yet, but it's had so much hangar time and so much hangar rash and so much hangar damage that you can already start to feel the flexing going on in it, uh, and adding some carbon fiber never hurt, it any, hurt, hurt anyone, guys, so, um, yeah, guys, so uh, the next time you guys will see me, I'll be out at the uh, flying field, we're probably just going to go ahead and... Um, Wait your way for person le personal lessons. Uh, Dave says you're going to rate. Fuck, I can't see it. It's white on white. Five dollars for a long time. So you long time. Uh, fiber keeps you healthy. It does, dude. Fiber does keep you healthy. Uh, anything can land. Anything go get a damn dynam GGB. Fuck that, man. I've seen, bro. I've seen GGBs. I've seen some some real actually great pilots flying ggbs those things are impossible man especially on grass just 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 give up just if i had a ggb bro i would honestly just hand launch that motherfucker and i'd take the gear right off of it or i'd put some goddamn big ass bush tires on that bitch put put some put some put put some four wheel drive on it jeff we're gonna teach you anyone one two two let me help you out yeah, Josh. Josh, real quick before before I before I get out of this uh, before I get out of the live stream, if you're still in here, man. How how are your uh, how how are your flying ventures going, man? I know you you said you were wanting to get more into the flying. How's that going for you, dude? Any major any major uh, disappointments? I'm 
I'm kind of curious of that. Actually, you know what? You're probably hat camming that shit and putting it on your channel, aren't you? I'll just go check out your channel, bro. I'll just go check out, check and see if you have any videos up. Um, it's hack, have not made in here yet. What did you say? I found one on Facebook. Um, what did you find on Facebook? A GGB? Joel? Kirsch? So you found one on Facebook Marketplace a few weeks ago. Have not maidened it yet. What did you find? Here, let me, I gotta refresh the chat now. Just broke war on the Havoc. Nice, dude. Nice. You're actually flying a fucking Havoc, bro? You don't hack cam. Good. Uh, that's good, man. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. You have somebody that films for you? Your wife? Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, wife or the kids? Take them out there and get them to do that for you, man. My wife doesn't mind doing it. She just sits. She actually doesn't mind doing it. She'll actually just sit in the Jeep. I'll park the Jeep like real close to where I'm going to be flying. And she'll just film out the window. Uh, at the same time, I will have a hat cam on. Um, and then I'll, I'll put up two videos. I'll put my hat cam video up. And then I'll also put the video up from, uh, from my wife. Um, a Scorpion 90. Okay, all right, got you. Keith Christie says, Dave, what's up, man? How you doing, man? Well, enjoy the shit out of yours, man. I'm going to enjoy the shit out of mine. Um, uh, Josh. Oh, man. Sorry, guys. I'm like yawning my ass off, man. I think I need to go smoke some more turtle weed. Um, I'll check out your channel, bro. I'll check out... I, you must have videos up, right? You, you, you obviously have flight videos on your channel of you flying. Uh, found my... On Facebook. Um, I ended up getting a... Um, getting this one... A um, little cheap, man. I had a credit. I, I, had, I had earned myself a credit. Um... Because of a couple of different things. And uh, I ended up using that credit towards this. So I got the plane fucking half off, guys. Long story short, something that they had wasn't in stock. I didn't want to wait for it. So I put the money towards that, towards this plane. Um, it had been sitting in credit for over a month. And then I just took that credit that I had and I put it towards this. So uh, basically, basically got a half off. Havoc is sweet. It is sweet, man. Mine's all good to go. I've flown it once since I've gotten it fixed, you guys. It, it, it's like it never even broke, you guys. I slammed that bitch into a... Well, I didn't slam it into the tree. We kind of parked it in the tree, right, guys? We kind of parked it in the tree. I was actually coming in for a landing. I had full flaps deployed, wheels down, or gear were down, and I was coming in real slow. I thought I was a little further in than what I was, and I was actually further out than what I... I was. I wasn't wearing my glasses. That's no excuse, though. Actually, it is an excuse. I should always be wearing my glasses when I fly these things because I do need prescription glasses to see things uh, far away. So I should definitely be flying with my glasses on no matter what. Um, uh, but during the day when it's bright out and there's no trees like over the place where I fly normally, um, I don't have to worry about it. But uh, yeah, man, uh, that thing uh, flies. <laughs> it almost seems like it flies better after the crash and after the broken fuselage and refuse of the fuselage, like the putting it back together, it actually seems like it flies better now than it did when it was new. Um, still need a number. Keith Christie still needs a number. Keith, so what I'm doing is I'm revamping my whole system, my number system. It's going to be the same exact thing. Um, but uh, Eric Rogers, um, he's my lead moderator. He's kind of like my little sidekick. Um, He's a really good friend of mine, you guys. I, 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 I just I, over the over the year over the last few years, I've gotten to know Eric quite a bit. Uh, also, Josh Weaven, uh, Dave Marshall, a lot of these guys that I've really gotten a little closer to uh, and gotten to know better. Um, and uh, he um, he pretty much makes these spreadsheets for me and shows me like all the giveaways that I've done, the ones that have been delivered, the one how much they were. Um, Anything that I have to package up and send out, like I got to send out Ethan RCs. I uh, gave him my my 4S uh, 
uh, high performance 64 millimeter Raptor. <sighs> Uh, it's a three channel plane that you can get from Motion RCA. I am giving that to Ethan. And then I'm also giving my Dynam Focke Wolf, which I've just done. Uh, I've just done all the repairs on it and fixed it to like, it's like brand new again. Um, I'm giving that to Eric Rogers along with, he sent me a bunch of um, uh, gyro receivers uh, that I can use with the Spectrum Radio. Uh, and I am sending him my ESC and my EDF that came out of my Avios MiG-17. Uh, it was a bit underpowered. Uh, seemed like it needed some type of calibration or something done to it. And he said that he would tinker with it and do it. I said, fine, I'll trade you. We did the trade and I got to send that out. That's also going to go in the box. Um, and then I'm keeping that box right there because I'm going to cut it in half. And um, Eric's stuff's all boxed up, but uh, the uh, F-22 is not. And I'm going to take that box right there. I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to put the F-22 in there. Actually, not even in half. I don't even need half. I just need... I can probably make it into almost a perfect square. That F-22 is not very big once you once you start disassembling it and you take off the wings and you take off the uh, the uh, vertical stab. Uh, the vertical stabs, it's it's super, it's not a it's not a very big plane at all. Um, but yeah, guys, that's it for me, man. I am going to go ahead and shut this down for right now. It was a pleasure talking to all of you guys in here. If you don't have a number, guys, don't worry about that. We're still a month away from the next giveaway. We have plenty of time to figure that out. Nine times out of ten, I figure it out that night. Uh, but the system's going to be a little different. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I was trying to say earlier was, uh, and then I forget because of my PTSD. It's just the way my brain works. I, I get ahead of myself, and then I, I don't catch up back to where I was before. Uh, Eric actually made me my own wheel. That's right, Eric. He downloaded my own wheel. Can put 200 like numbers in there, or 200 names, or whatever, whatever I want. And uh, Dave's RC's got his own fucking wheel now, guys. So fuck Dave Marshall, fuck Pilot Ryan. Dave's got his own wheel. Dave's got his own wheel. Got his own wheel. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> got my own motherfucking wheel, man. Thanks to Eric Rogers, man. That's like what I was saying, man. Uh, Eric helps me out a lot, man. Uh, and he also motivates me and gets my ass in gear to get this shit done and get it sent out and make sure that everybody gets their stuff. Um, Unfortunately, he doesn't bitch at me enough to get his stuff sent out, so <laughs> his stuff's still sitting in there. <laughs> uh, but he does motivate me to get everybody else's stuff out. Just uh, he's, he's a very selfless person, and that's what I like about Eric. He's not a selfish guy. Uh, he's very composed, a composed guy. You know, he's, he's, not, over, he's not overzealous. You know, he's, he's, not, he's not one of the guys that's going to go out of his way and, you know, my dick's bigger than your dick kind of thing. He's, he's just not like that. Um, and... Uh, that's the kind of person, that's the type of friends that I need around me, man. Because if you get those bullheaded people around me and those big-headed people like uh, like Dave Marshall, I'll fight. I'll fucking fight. I'll fight, Dave. I I'll fight. Like that. Drop of the hat, baby. What? What? I hope he's watching. <laughs> Dave Marshall, Air Marshall Mondays. Motherfucker. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm out of here. Dave's RC. We'll see you guys at the flying field. What the fuck? You got tap shoes on? Where'd you get those paws? Those sound, those sound cool, man. Actually, he's going in tomorrow to get his goddamn nails cut. Uh, going to the vet. He's going to go to the vet. He's going to go to the vet and get his goddamn nails cut. I don't like cutting them because they're solid black, you guys. Uh, he only has, like, two white nails. And I do cut those ones, but I don't like touching the black ones, man. Because so many times I've cut those bitches and had to stuff that shit into his nail. That you, that that stuff in the jar. I don't know, some stuff that you stuff in the nail when, when you cut it and it bleeds. Uh, but anyways, guys, that's it. I'm Dave, Dave's RC. We'll see you guys out at the flying field here in an hour or so. Um, I'm going to clean up this place a little bit. Actually, I already did, really. Um... Before my wife gets home, maybe get the dishes done and stuff. That way she doesn't have to do anything when she gets home. Um, and then get the other battery charged and we're going to go out to the field. I'll have Kyle with me. If Kyle doesn't want to go, uh, then Tyler will, Tyler will be more than happy to go because he's going to want to fly the SU-30 anyway. And I want to see what the SU-30 flies like on the lighter pack on the, uh, on the 5000 uh, smart battery. So, uh, yeah, guys, we'll see you then. I'm out of here. Dave's RC, guys. Peace.